As a native of Pennsylvania, I've been hunting and fishing my entire life. 20 years ago, when public hunting ground became too pressured, I purchased my own 330-acre hunting property. As requests to hunt my property increased, I decided in 2010 to start guiding small groups of clients. My outfitting business was intended as a hobby and a way to help offset the costs of maintaining and hunting my property. I started my daughter Jessie hunting at a young age and I am so proud of the outdoors woman she has become. Jessie is a big part of Bone and Beard's outfitting and when she's not out hunting or guiding, she helps me with the maintenance of our hunting grounds. Sharing my piece of Pennsylvania outdoors not only with my daughter but with our clients makes all the hard work worthwhile. I'm John Micko and I'm an outfitter. I'm in Pennsylvania and I'm going whitetail hunting with John Micko. John owns Micko's Bone and Beards Outfitters and I guess he's got one heck of an area. It sounds like over 300 acres of private ground, which in Pennsylvania, that's a pretty big chunk of property. You know, I'm also looking forward to meeting John's daughter, Jessie. Apparently she's as passionate about hunting as he is and she also helps him out with every aspect of the outfitting business. I've got a buck tag and I've got an antlerless doe tag as well. I'm just looking forward to getting there, waking up in the morning, and climbing up in a tree stand. Thanks for having me out, buddy. I appreciate it. Anytime. I'm glad you were able to make it. Yeah, man, my shoulder. I was lucky. Uh, I was lucky they allowed me to use a crossbow during archery season here. I, I wouldn't have been able to. Just before I was going on the hunt, I was guiding in Colorado and I tore up my shoulder something fierce. And I tried to draw my recurve and I literally could not draw my bow at all. So then I grabbed my compound, cranked it down to only like 40 pounds, tried to draw my compound and couldn't draw my compound. So I called John kind of in a panic. I said, John, I don't know what to do. I can't shoot my recurve, can't shoot my compound. And he said, Fred, you know what? You can shoot a crossbow during the archery season here. So I grabbed a crossbow and came out to Pennsylvania. Well, it starts getting light and I'm looking around going, this is absolutely beautiful. A deer should be walking out any second. And sure enough, out comes a deer. It was a yearling buck. You could just barely see little nubs on his head. And he was browsing on leaves and he was picking up acorns and he messed around for about five minutes. And all I could think of is where is your grandpa? Well, that was pretty cool. The first deer in the morning just walked by. Here where I'm hunting in Pennsylvania, there's a minimum a deer has to have these four points on one side. It really helps out their age structure, or at least, you know, the size of the box. Most people are taking you no know, decent box. I'm not picky, so if it has small, even if it's four small points on one side, I'll take it. One point, here come some dogs. They're running through the woods. Then I see a flash of antlers. A small buck comes running past, and I'm trying to count. One, two, one, two, one, two. Ugh, I couldn't make any more than two points per side. It was a young two by two white tail, absolutely beautiful, but he wasn't legal. We don't usually have problems with dogs running through, but you know, it happens two or three times in the last 19 years. There's a lot of rubs leading into this spot. There are a lot of trails leading past this spot. And uh, if they're using the trails, it's just a matter of time before they use them while someone's in the stand. The Outfitters is brought to you by America's best-selling truck for 40 straight years. Ford F-Series. Built Ford Tough. Pennsylvania has a lot of hunters. There's a lot of hunting pressure, and there's very little public land that you can hunt anymore besides state game lands. After I bought this property, you start to learn animal habitat and you start to learn habits and watching deer instead of harvesting deer teaches you more than shooting the first thing that comes along. And Just watching them come in and see how they react, it's unbelievable how much you learn from that. And Jesse's learned that as well. So you've been hunting with your dad since you were a little girl, like three years old, right? <laughs> yep. That's awesome. <laughs> now, how old were you when you killed your first deer? Do you remember? My first deer? Well, 
I'd say 12. 12 years old, shot your first year. I just get so excited where like, when I get excited, my finger starts to like, just like twiddle, like, like just go like this. And then even like when other people shoot deer, I just get like an adrenaline rush from them too. See, that's what's cool about guiding though, right? Oh my gosh. Because that's the qualities that make a good guide. If you get as excited when somebody else shoots something as you do, to me, you're truly passionate about it. I love it so much. I really do. It's hard when you have like other things that you have to do, like school and the army and stuff like that. Yeah, school and work sometimes get in the way of playing all the time, doesn't it? All the time. <laughs> you know, Jesse, what I'm impressed about, that piece of property you guys have is amazing. We've done a lot to it since my dad bought it. This is like his passion. This is like all he loves to do. And so all year long, we just work on it. So I try to help him out as much as I can. He cuts trails, we mow, we plant food plots. Anything and everything that we can do to make the seasons better for him and obviously other people too, but he just loves it. So tell me about where you're taking me tonight. Near the apple orchard. There's a ton of apple trees. It's loaded with sign. There's tracks everywhere, rubs everywhere. It's just incredible, like all of the sign that's there. Sounds like a pretty cool spot. Oh, I can't wait till I get to hunt it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, we have arrived. We've arrived at my yeah. spot. I like it. You know, I knew it was going to be a challenge hunting Pennsylvania deer. They're pretty educated deer because there are a lot of hunters. So I knew deer hunting in Pennsylvania was going to be a challenge. You know, it's the middle of October and the rut hasn't really kicked in, but John's place is pretty awesome because he's also got agriculture. All right, I'll see you later. See ya. So not only do the deer have tons of natural browse, but there's also agriculture that they're hitting as well. So if you've got the food and the bedding area, well, you're gonna have the deer. Well, I just got into the new spot here. You can see the old apple orchard in front of me. That's pretty cool. There's an old creek, a little trickle. There's fresh tracks right down below me. It looks really good. So pretty excited about this spot. It's almost like stepping back in time. You know, somebody probably had an old cabin in here or something. And they probably made fresh apple pie out of those apples, which is actually making me hungry. <laughs> He's got nice long brow tines, almost six inches. This is the guy I want <laughs> Fred to get. This apple tree right here is right across from where that thicket of trees is. Uh, along the edge of the bean fields. We could probably put a ground blind in there for Fred because he has a bum shoulder. Well, I'm a college student at Clarion University. I'm in the ROTC program there. I go to class all day long. I'm a bio major. So basically my life just revolves around the army and school and hunting, obviously. So hunting is my break, you know? So even though technically sometimes I'm working for helping other people out, this is my break. It's my break to me. You good? Yeah, you look good. Hunting is like my relationship with my dad. It's what we do all the time together. Like that's the one thing that him and I connect with. A lot of people connect with their parents on maybe sports or other hobbies, but like hunting is my way of connecting with my dad. We go out almost every day in all the seasons, all the hunting seasons. It's really cool, like I learned so much from him and it's just a great experience, honestly. It just looks good in here. Lots of deer trails, lots of sign. It's everywhere. Lots of tracks. And my dad actually didn't learn how to hunt from his dad and he actually learned from a friend back when he was in high school. And so I think it's cool that he passed that to my dad and my dad passed it on to me. And obviously I'm gonna pass it on to my kids as well. My kids are gonna be hunters, that's, that's a definite. setup for tonight looks good. I've arranged a couple shots. If anything happens in here tonight, it's gonna be close, real close. You know, in the back of your mind, especially in a state that has regulations on minimum size of a buck, I have to make sure that it's of legal size. I have to make sure that it has four points on one side. So that's kind of in the back of my mind as well as I'm looking through the brush trying to spot these deer. And then right in front of me, Coming through the trail, I spot a buck. I'm super excited. This may be a legal deer, and I'm trying to count. No, it's not. So <laughs> this deer comes up, and it's a beautiful dark colored two by two, and of course, he presents a perfect shooting opportunity.
The all-new 2017 Ford Super Duty was designed to perform on the toughest job sites. And there aren't many job sites tougher than King Ranch. When you have to deal with more than 800,000 acres of tough Texas terrain, you never know what your next job is going to be. So you need a truck that's ready for anything. And that's the 2017 Super Duty. Ford fitted it with a high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body. That cut weight that Ford added right back into the parts of the truck that matter most. Like the fully boxed high-strength steel frame with through welded cross members and six times more high-strength steel that make it up to 24 times stiffer. The all-new 2017 Super Duty also offers the best towing power and best payload of any Super Duty ever. This is the next level. And this is why Ford says, we own work. Wake up the next morning, it is pouring rain. Well, John had it covered. Him and his daughter had set up a pop-up blind for me, so that was my location for the next morning. Well, we're in a different spot this morning. Had a little bit of cover here. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful woods in here. But I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, I've known Fred for almost nine years now. I've been trying to get him to come out to the property for about nine years now. It's making me feel a little stressful right now because as an outfitter, even getting someone a shot at a doe should be relatively easy. And this week has not been easy at all. The weather hasn't been cooperating and the deer haven't been cooperating. So, you know, it's been a little stressful. And um, just because the hunter's out in the woods right now hunting doesn't mean my day's over. Yeah, Mike, this is the cable I was telling you about. I have no idea where it's gonna go. How far back do you think? No idea. We'll give her a shot. Okay. Today we're gonna use the F-150 and we're gonna pull some major cables out of the ground. We have some cables that were left over from the strip mining about 40 years ago. They're pretty large cables and we're not sure how deep they go or what's connected to the end of them. All right, Mike, why don't you stay here and just let me know when the, when the strap is tight. Okay. Okay. Yep. Michael Joseph's coming out to help today. He's one of my best clients and a good friend of mine and skipped work this afternoon to come give me a hand. One down, one to go. Looks good. You get the tailgate, Mike? Sure. Get ready? Yep. Well, even though it's pre-rut, at one point, I thought it might be good to try doing a little rattling. Well, I felt good doing it. I knew it was early, but you never know, so I gave it a shot. But nothing came running in. So in the spot you're taking me to tonight, which way do the deer usually come? Is there a place I should concentrate on more than the other, or? Well, there's about three trails there. <clears throat> and all depends on the wind direction, which way they're going to come. But um, everywhere but directly behind you to your left, I mean, they could come in any direction. So almost 360, I've got to be prepared for. Almost 360. You know, little buck the other night, I'm hoping uh, maybe his dad or his grandfather walks out. I'm thinking tonight's going to be pretty good. Yeah, I think with the cooler weather, I agree. I think we're probably getting close to the rut. Hopefully something will happen for us over there. At one point, I've got a couple does out in front of me, but they're nervous. I don't know if they smelled where I had walked in. I don't know if the dogs were around, coyotes, but something had these does super nervous. So I watched those deer. They finally moved off through the bottom. I really want to take some meat back, but not so bad that I'm going to take a risky shot. Thanks, buddy. No problem. How'd it go tonight? You know what? I didn't get one, but it was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it was a night. It was a neat night. Right. I just want to unload this bad boy. Just gotta find. There it is. Perfect. Mind if I just shoot it into the dirt right here? Fred had a couple edgy does come in about 40 yards out. Thank you, sir. Didn't really have a great shot, which he chose to pass, which is awesome.
we thought we'd definitely change things up this morning. We're gonna send him to the, our normal evening spot in the morning. The apples have been cleaned up by the time he gets there in the evening. So we're hoping that if we get him in there this morning, they'll come in to feed and he'll get an opportunity this morning. Ford F-Series has been America's go-to truck for 40 years. Now's your chance to join one of the great hunting or fishing outfitters you see here and win a new F-Series truck. Just visit thefordoutfitters.com and enter the Ford Go-To Sweepstakes. I'm scanning the woods, it's starting to get lighter. Don't see any deer, but I could see a lot of fresh deer tracks in the mud, so I know that they were moving around a lot at night. All of a sudden to my left, I catch some movement. Not one, but two deer come around one of John's mowed trails and is cruising past the tree stand. Instantly my heart starts pounding, I'm getting excited, and I look at the first deer and I see that it's got little buttons. Wow, it's a perfect size eating deer. And it's in range, but it's a yearling buck. But right behind him comes a young doe. I'm excited because this is exactly what I want. This is the perfect size eating deer. All I need now is a shot. <laughs> Down right there. That's my first deer in Pennsylvania. That is awesome. Last day. Oh. <laughs> yep, yeah, old shoulders hurting. Pretty incredible morning though. You can see where that bolt just went right through the ear. And that's what you want using a muzzy. And it's kind of a hybrid. You can see it's a, got a fixed blade and an open blade as well. It just creates a larger wound channel. And that tells you that it was a good shot. There's blood right away, right there on the leaves. That is awesome. That deer didn't go anywhere. From right here, where that deer's at, where I shot, it's 27 yards. That's exactly what you want. That's what every hunter wants. You know, a quick, clean kill on a beautiful animal. And uh, that is gonna be some incredible meat on this beautiful doe. I could not be happier. Shot exactly where I wanted. Uh, the arrow came out right below the point of the shoulder there. So took out probably both the lungs, top of the heart maybe. So here's my Pennsylvania deer tag. And I've got to attach that to the ear. And I'm also gonna let John know because he'll be excited. He'll want to come out here and not only celebrate it with me, but also probably help me get it out of the field. Deer down. Well, it's time for me to take care of this deer, tag it, and then drag it out and meet John in the Ford. Thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs> Got her done. Thanks, man. That awesome was awesome. Morning. Oh, it was great morning. Beautiful. Great. Cold leaves falling in the trees. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Well, I've got a doe down but I've still got one evening to hunt and I still have a buck tag in my pocket. So what did I do? Well, that's right. I get myself back up into another tree stand to sit one more time. 
It was so awesome getting a doe, and John wants me to head back out to the same tree stand where I saw the two by two and saw some other bucks that were back in the thick stuff. You know, here it was starting to get evening. It's the last hour, literally the last hour of my hunt. I couldn't believe it. Not only did I see one deer, but it was a big buck. Unfortunately, he was about 45 yards away, had no idea I was there. I could see him through the brush, but there was no way I had a shot from my position. Plus 40 plus yards is stretching it for a crossbow. You know, it was so neat just to see a legal buck in Pennsylvania was really an accomplishment. The fact that it was the last hour of the last day made it even more of a nail biter. You know, to some people going on an out of state hunt and not harvesting a buck would make that trip unsuccessful. For me, this trip was successful after the first day. It's not really about the deer, it's more about the adventure. I met a guy whose daughter, he's raised her up in the outdoors and she's as passionate about it as he is. So for me, it really wasn't about the deer at all. Don't get me wrong, I am tickled pink with my deer. Some people wouldn't say a small doe is a trophy, but I'd have to disagree. Because you know, when it comes right down to it, when you put it in the pan, well, you can't eat the antlers.